we think of resilience as an internal quality, a trait very often that we can develop, um, that we can work on, some of which is absolutely true. You can definitely alter your habits of mind. But to just turn inwardly to seek resilience is an illusion. We are all at some point in life dependent, fragile, vulnerable. We might be able to cope in one situation, but not another situation. And so if there's really one message, it is to think of resilience always in relational terms, to think of mm -hmm. ourselves in relational terms. The, the, when I mentioned binaries before, it's clear that the mind-body binary is dominant in our culture, dominant in our approach to resilience. A lot of the way we learn to think about resilience is that it is a quality of the mind, that it is disembodied. And I try to show in the book how dangerous and harmful that is because when we separate with, with such um, extreme thinking, the mind and the body, and we, we do it with a hierarchy, the mind is always better than the body, right? That's also a gendered split. It's also a split between the people who are considered a moral quality a person versus a non-person. So historically, non-persons would include people of African descent, indigenous people, um, versus white European people in philosophical terms. All, all of those binaries result in an ease with brutalizing the body, ignoring the body, undervaluing, again, the care that it requires to sustain life, to to everything from giving birth to tending to people as they die. And so if we can acknowledge the fact that we are all ultimately dependent on each other, that we all have moments of need, we shouldn't think of it with contempt, which is often the, res the, the case, right? That, that you're somehow weak for being a person in need, that neediness is not something that we appreciate. 